Two weeks ago, while everyone was swinging overly bearish, I told you guys that Bitcoin was going to bounce off of this key level and bounce we did. Now today, while everyone is swinging bullish, I'm here to tell you that it's not time just yet. In this video, we'll be talking about the key level that Bitcoin needs to break for the next big move to the upside. <laughs> And what's cracking you guys welcome 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 to the mango grove my name is krisha and this is today's bitcoin analysis video happy friday to each and every one of you my camera moved right there let's move it back and can you see me yes you can Alrighty, so i hope you guys have been having an excellent day so far my friday has been very very tiring and that's why this video is going to be a tad bit late but hey even though it was a very tiring friday i feel very accomplished and here's why I am super, super excited to be announcing my trading course for beginners. After the last Casper video, a lot of you reached out to me asking me a lot of questions on pattern trading. And I know that for years now, a lot of Mongolians have been asking me for tips and tricks on pattern trading. So I am finally releasing a course in which pattern trading is going to be a key component. Now I have named the course Mango Sprouts, okay? Now since it is going to be a work in progress, there is a massive early bird discount on it where you're gonna be getting 50% off on the original price of the program plus, plus a 20% lifetime coupon on any Mango indicator as well as course that we have right now or that we will be introducing in the future. And also guys, this is going to be a beginner's course, so no prior knowledge needed whatsoever, all right? I'll be walking you through concepts from the ground up. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna be linking this page down in the description, so if you wanna go ahead and check it out, see what you're getting from here, see if this program is for you, go ahead and check it out. Now the first three modules will be released in the first week of October, which is less than a week. And then every other module will be released as a trip. Of course, I will be announcing the release date for those modules. Now I intend on wrapping this up by at least end of October, getting into November. However, once all the modules have been completed, I will be closing out the early bird discount window. Okay, so just a heads up on that. Now as an early bird, if you have any lessons that you particularly want to learn, let me know and and I will consider adding it to the program. Now, of course, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can reach out to me via email at krishatmangoresearch.co. Once again, I will be linking it in the description below, as well as you can reach out to me on Discord, get into the Mango Growth, the mangoway.com slash Discord, and you'll find me under the admins list, okay? Crash talk. Um, so yeah, with that, guys, let's get into the chart. Bitcoin is doing something very, very interesting here okay and why am i calling it interesting because considering the backdrop right now we're seeing dixie rally we're seeing yields also rally and usually when you have that combination the markets are either consolidating or they're dumping but instead we're seeing bitcoin actually catch a bid here now why is this picture even more interesting is because it is september 29th which means we're wrapping up the month of september we're looking at a new monthly open on the Sunday, as well as a new weekly open, of course, on the Monday. Okay, and both these time frames right now are painting a very, very good picture. Yes, it's a good picture right now. And here is why. On the monthly time frame, guys, there is one level that we have been looking at here now for, well, hell, months on end, right? This is one of our bull run indicators, which is the 10 simple moving average. Go ahead and turn that on. Perfect, now here we have the monthly 10 simple moving average. Now this is one of those bull run indicators that we were looking at, well, to identify whether or not Bitcoin is still within its bull run signature. So essentially what we were looking for over here was for price to get defended at that 10 simple moving average. Historically, guys, if I pull up every, every instance that that Bitcoin has reclaimed the 10 simple moving average, getting out of a bear market phase, okay? So we're looking for sustained monthly closes over the 10 SMA. That has often marked bull run territory for Bitcoin, all right? Just for instance here, May 2012, right? When we did take out the, uh, the 10 simple moving average, got sustained closes over it, that marked the initiation of that next bull run phase. Once again, we got into the bear market of 2015. It was only once we started getting those sustained closes over the monthly 10 SMA did we actually see the next markup phase getting into the bull run of 2017, where Bitcoin went from around $200 all the way up to $20,000. Now, once again, guys, right here in April of 2019, when we did get a close of the 10 simple moving average, that marked the initiation 
indication of the next bullish phase for Bitcoin, where we went from 5K all the way up to $14,000. Now, once again, guys, even emerging out of COVID, notice what we did here, sustained closes over the 10 simple moving average, which then marked that bullish phase for Bitcoin. This really helped check my biases as well, because once again, guys, if you remember during COVID, Stuff outside was not looking very good, okay? It looked like the freaking walking dead out there. So you got to use your objective indicators. You got to use price action to keep you on the right side of the market. And this right here, even though the, the sentiment was overall bearish, price action was telling us otherwise. That marked the initiation of the next run-up phase for Bitcoin that took us from around $7,000 all the way up to $60,000. Now, once again, guys, the same phase. Right now, I understand the past couple of months since Jan, it's been a lot of sideways for Bitcoin. You know, fine, we did have this beautiful run up. So far, guys, you need to understand that from the bottom to where Bitcoin's at right now, that's still a good 64% to the upside, which is still good. But this entire consolidation right here has been excruciating for the market, right? But that said, once again, if we look at those overarching objective indicators, for instance, the 10 simple moving average, where is price relative to the 10 SMA? Well, right now, guys, as things stand, now we took it out in Jan of 2023. So Jan of this year, we have been closing candles, sustained closes over that 10 simple moving average. Now, once again, what we were looking for over here, now last month, things were looking freaking bearish, right? Last month, we were looking for Bitcoin to hold that 10 simple moving average, and it held. In fact, that was the only bull run indicator that it held. Everything else broke signature. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, everything else broke signature. This was the last straw. Okay, so it was very important that Bitcoin hold this region as support. Now, question is, are we holding it as support? Now, we have two more days left before this candle closes. And so far, guys, Bitcoin is holding this as support. However, the previous month, the level was $25,000. The 10 SMA has now sloped up. So that 10 SMA level has changed. Our new support has changed. So if you guys want to take note of this number, go ahead and do so. The new region of support that we want Bitcoin to hold in the next two days is $26,028. If you have to take note of it, go ahead and do so. $26,028. I want to see Bitcoin close over this level in the next two days. So the next month of October needs to open over this level for, for me to be like, okay, the bulls are still in control on the macro picture. Now, so far, while the monthly looks like it's being defended, I believe that the picture is also good if you look at the weekly time frame. Now, my last analysis, guys, we went over some key weekly levels, right? Specifically the cloud levels. We noticed that price closed inside the Ichimoku cloud. Now, for those of you, especially those of you in the seed program who are familiar with Ichimoku cloud theory, you know the trade setup right here. There is a very, very clear edge to edge strategy that you can play just based on the Ichimoku cloud where you essentially trade the asset from one edge of the cloud all the way up to the next edge of the cloud. Guys, that next edge is only coming at $42,000. For those of you wondering where Sean is getting his target from, he's looking at the edge of the cloud. So from one edge to the other edge, that's going to be the next trade setup. So it's actually very crucial that we see the bulls pick up price on cloud support, and it did. And also, notice the confluence on here. Where is cloud support coming in at? In line with the monthly 10 simple moving average. So the weekly candle, and the monthly candle need to defend the same level right now, $26,028. And if we can do that, yeah, the bulls have a fighting chance. And why am I saying fighting chance? I mean, it's a, it's a decent picture for the bulls, but it's still, they still have to put up a fight. Okay, and why is that? Well, in the last video, I told you guys that, hey, Bitcoin right now is stuck in the middle of a rock and a hard place, all right? The rock being this, this, the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud, okay, which is support. But the hard place is resistance. Yeah, price bounced. But right now it's still bouncing into resistance. And where is that resistance coming in at? Guys, turn on your mango dynamic indicator. This is one of the other bullish signals that we were looking at on Bitcoin's chart to keep us on the right side of this market. And we got a tad bit bearish. We're like, okay, you know what? It's not looking too good. We're looking at a prolonged consolidation or maybe even another drawdown based on this. This is one of the other cyclical indicators that we look at right here. Right? We wanted to see price get defended over the dynamic cloud, but, but we lost it back here in August. Okay, so now here's the rock in the hard place. The rock is $26,000, which is bottom of the cloud, which is the monthly 10 SMA, but the hard place is, well, overhead resistance coming in at the dynamic cloud. All right, for those of you who do not have access to the indicator, but you want the levels, go ahead and take note of it. 
okay? The levels come at, it's a range, all right? The dynamic cloud is a range. Top of the range comes in at around $26,875 and bottom of the range comes in at around $26,284. You can actually go ahead, let's go ahead and mark out a little box for ourselves there. Now this is the zone where the bulls and the bears are currently fighting at. All right, 26,000 going all the way up to 26.8K. All right, so eyes on this zone because depending on where price breaks out, whether we break to the upside, all right, or to the downside, that is going to give us our tell on who's got the edge or is it the bulls or the bears? That's also gonna let us know, okay, you know what, what should we expect next? Can we actually expect a pump to the upside or a dump to the downside? So far, the bulls appear to be winning the fight on the range. As you can see, we're currently hovering over that green box territory as well as the dynamic cloud. However, the battle is not over, guys. This is the weekly time frame. We still got two more days left before this candle closes. And you guys know exactly what we look for here at Mango. We are looking for confirmation. All right, for us to look for confirmation, we're looking for a candle close over this region at around $26,800. If the bulls can reclaim that region, and yes, I'm using the word reclaim and not defend because we have not claimed it just yet. Okay, if the bulls can do that, then I'm saying chances of price action moving is to the upside. I will be looking at the next move to be a move to the upside as opposed to the downside. But now for those of you wondering, well, what can we really expect? Is there anything alluding to, well, the bulls winning or the bears winning right now? What can we really look for? Well, for that, I if I really had to place my bets, bets here, I'm saying the bulls are low-key winning the fight here. If you get on over to the daily time frame, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to switch off everything else. Let's keep the green box territory on. But I'm noticing a, um, a bullish pattern on this chart. Okay, and here is the pattern for those of you who have not spotted it just yet. Well, I see a bullish head and shoulders pattern right here with this being the left shoulder, head and the right shoulder. Now patterns guys is merely just a subset of trend analysis, but there's a lot that you can tell about market psychologies just by looking at a pattern. Now in this instance right here, notice how the buyers are willing to step in way earlier. Okay, even though we had a much, much lower local low here that came in at around 25K, you know, they managed to pick price up at $26,000. They stepped in right here at $26,000. No wicks either underneath $26,000. The market refused to accept price anything less than $26,000, which is giving this a bit more of a bullish tilt. Now, if you have to consider the entire pattern, let's go ahead and draw the neckline, All right? This is the neckline right here. And that's why I'm saying that this has not broken just yet. And let's go ahead and plot out the measured move of this pattern. All right, here's the measured move, plot it on the potential break. All right, because once again, this is not broken just yet. This will likely take Bitcoin all the way up to $30,000. That is the measured move of that head and shoulders pattern. All right, guys, I got a surprise, uh, surprise guest who crashed the party, Sean. Say hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I can't let you have all the fun when the markets are... Uh... Maybe beginning to get exciting. Maybe, maybe. Right, right. So Sean, I was just showing them this uh, in into the camera. Oh. Yeah. Sean, I was <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I was just showing them this inverted head and shoulders pattern. Do you see it? Did you see it? Yeah. Do you yeah. know what the measure move is? Twenty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety apparently. We'll round up to thirty K. Let's go. Thirty K. So thirty K. If okay. this breaks up to thirty K, we're going straight to forty K. Forty-two thousand, oh. it's written. Forty. Okay. Yeah. So I, I in fact, I, I just spoke to them about forty-two k, and I told oh. them exactly where you got that target from, which is the top of the cloud, guys. Edge to edge strategy on the cloud. But here is one thing that I brought up in the last video, and I said, hey, this is bloody bearish if it triggers, right? And what was that one signature on Bitcoin's chart? Well, this guys was on the daily time frame. Get on over to your daily time frame. Turn on your mango ribbon, specifically the 55 EMA and the 200 exponential moving average, which marks out either one, it's either a golden cross or it's either a death cross. And we don't wanna see a death cross happen here, right? Mm. Now, what really marks a death cross on the daily time frame? It's when that green line crosses underneath the purple line, essentially a 55 exponential moving average, a faster exponential moving average crossing below your slower exponential moving average, that is your death cross. All right, so we were almost gonna get that, Sean. In fact, we may still get it, but it may recross golden. Yeah. Right? Now, now, 
uh, can we can we talk about Dixie real quick? Sure. Right. Can you pull up the chart and keep keep the same template on with your golden cross? Because this is something again we talked about all the way back in Jan slash December, right? We mm-hmm. talked about this in detail, guys, for those of you who've been following since back then. This is very, very relevant what's going on like, with Bitcoin's death cross and Dixie's death cross because back in Jan, we went through a detailed analysis where we came to the conclusion that it's when Dixie gets its second death cross where we get really, really excited for the real bull run. We yeah. said the first death cross is just the, hey, let's get ready, let's get our mindsets ready, right? But it's the second death cross. We, we did a historic analysis. We're not going to go through it right now, okay? But what's going on at, at the current juncture with Dixie? We had our first death cross all the way back in Jan, right? We got it, we got excited, but we said, hey, temper it down. It's only when we get the second death cross. But the second death cross would imply a golden cross coming in first on Dixie, and then the second death cross, right? Well, we got the golden cross around, let's say, two weeks ago, right? Got the, we got the, death, uh, the golden cross. Now Dixie is topping out. We're seeing the rejection on Dixie at the current juncture. If this keeps coming back down, we will get the second death, death cross. cross. Yes, we had to wait 10 months for it, but it's finally here. Everything's lining up. <laughs> and remember, what was our target? What was our final target back then? Our final target was $42,000, right? And the reason that was our final target, guys, was because we said the quicker Bitcoin gets to 42 k the quicker we are going to sell as a community, right? But Bitcoin didn't get that quick. It took 10 months. Yeah. So now, potentially, if the signs are right, we can potentially look for higher targets. Won't talk about that in this video, but keep that in the back of your mind, guys. Things are looking good. Dixie's second death cross looming, which is good for crypto. There you go, guys. You got a bit of macro too here today. Aren't you glad Sean crashed the party? Oh, no, but... it's all that gym energy. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's got a cool shirt. He's got Dexter on his shirt. Yeah, my name's Dexter. Sean Dexter for those of you who have forgotten. <laughs> she's been taking over the daily videos. <laughs> So anyways, getting back on over to Bitcoin. So guys, Dixie is very, very important. You take note of that. The double death cross on Dixie is likely going to signal the next rally for Bitcoin as well as other risk on assets. But now getting into Bitcoin's picture, guys, a quick recap. All right, we're looking at this range here. And remember, we're looking at the bottom of the range. We have the monthly 10 simple moving average. We're looking for price to defend the monthly 10 SMA getting into that next open of October. 26,028 is the new level that you are looking at. Price that that 10 simple moving average has sloped up. Also now the bullish sign, by the way, for Bitcoin. We want to see a nice positive slope on there. Okay, so monthly 10 SMA has support. But what's that resistance, guys? Weekly dynamic. While price is currently looking good along the weekly dynamic, we have not closed a candle just yet. All right, I want you to take an example from that previous weekly candle as well. We were living well over the mango dynamic indicator, only for price to freaking close yeah. red. Okay, so you don't want to see that. Wait on that confirmation before taking your trades because, hey, you might actually get a better bid on your trade. Okay. So this region, the resistance is coming in at 26.8K. For those of you wondering, okay, Krisha, what happens if price closes underneath 26.8K but over $26,000? Range bound, man. Stalemate. Stalemate. This is war zone right now, okay? For the bulls and the bears, this right here is war zone. Remember, okay. guys, your indicators, it exists for you to be able to say, hey, I'm just going to wait for my indicator to tell me what to do. So that way, if things go wrong, I get to blame my indicator, right? That's what removes a lot of the decision fatigue in trading, using indicators that are objective, right? So objective tools. So we we'll just wait for it to close above, man. If it doesn't, just go back to enjoying the beach life. Boom. Just go back to enjoying the beach. You don't always have to be in a trade, guys. Remember that you don't always have to be in a trade. Honestly, guys, my hair has grown so much ever since I started using indicators. All that stress was removed and just kept growing, 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 growing. You guys remember back in the day when my hair was short? Well, I started using indicators and then boom, this what happened. <laughs> That's how you grow your hair, guys. Just a quick tip. Now, Stop so- using indicators. <laughs> Okay, so guys, if price closes over the weekly dynamic, that's when I'll be looking for further continuation to the upside. What are the targets to the upside? I'm keeping this relatively simple for myself. Put on your weekly Ichimoku cloud, okay? Yeah. Notice that there are a few things. I have three targets here for you guys, okay? First target, honestly, comes in at the Tenkin, okay? Yeah. Dude, Tenkin is also like gospel here on the weekly time frame. And, and don't wanna, mess with the Tenkin. I want to interrupt over there, Kushan, okay. just for a quick sec. For those of you who don't have access to the dynamic, 
this is all you need, the Ichimoku cloud, right? Just use the Ichimoku. Remember, the mango ribbon is completely free. Join our Discord at themangoway.com slash Discord. Again, themangoway.com slash Discord. PM me or Krisha, and we'll give you guys access to the mango ribbon. We'll get access to all the all our EMA settings, our MA settings, as well as our Ichimoku settings. Yeah. And this is all you guys really need, right? Um, yes, the dynamic will, will allow you to get, like, e quicker entries and exits, but the Ichimoku gives you those more confirmed entry exits. And I'll be using the Tenkin as well to get my confirmation for that big move to 42,000. So, Kusha, is that what you're looking at too? The big move? Yes, yeah, that's going to be the ultimate target. Yeah, yeah. I'm not looking. I know Sean is looking. You're looking for it pretty the fast. The big win. Yeah, no, the I'm big just win. looking for the big win. Okay. These range bound trades aren't for me, guys. Um, I, I like think, the ranges. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Sean is more of the trend. He'll catch I'll those go big for trends. The big wins, but I do give up a lot of profits. Always trying to hunt for the big wins. Hey, it's a give or take. Give right. or take. That's true. Um. Okay. So first target, guys. I'm looking at the weekly tenkin. It's not a level to be ignored. Weekly tenkin comes in at around twenty eight point three k. Alrighty. After 28.3k, can we look at that beautiful target of our, our head and shoulders pattern that I drew up for you on the daily time frame coming in at $30,000? I especially like this target considering that it also gets up to those previous local highs that we put in back in April of this year as well as June of this year where we got rejected last time around. Alrighty, so that's going to be my next tar uh, target, 30k. It's only when we break 30k that I will be looking for $42,000. Until then, hey, I'm okay playing the ranges. Okay, so hey, if you're in my boat, then all well and good. If you're in Sean's boat, all well and good, but take those high conviction plays and always stick to your rules. Alrighty, but yeah, this is all we have for you for Bitcoin. And um, any final thoughts, Sean? Nope, we covered it all. Cool beans. If you like this video, hit the sub and we will see you in the next update. With this, trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way. Ciao, you guys. Ciao.